This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with stills inside Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show the differences between creating moves on stills using the Ken Burns effect and using keyframes. And I want to start with the Ken Burns effect. Now the good news about the Ken Burns effect is it's really effective and it's a very popular effect. It allows us to do moves on either still images or video, though it's most commonly used for still images. Before we set the effect, let's make sure that the image is set correctly. Let's open the inspector, go down to spatial conform, and you want to make sure spatial conform is set to fit so the entire image is fit into the window. To give you an idea of how much you can zoom, if we set this to none, we can see that we can zoom in some, but we can't get really tight on the image. That's why we created it at two times or three times normal, so we could zoom in without losing image quality. But for the effect to work the easiest, set this to fit. We'll hide the inspector because we don't need it. Select the clip, and this icon down here, if we click the downward pointing arrow, select crop, there's three options. Click on Ken Burns. The green rectangle represents the starting position, and the ending rectangle represents the ending position of this move. Because I want to start full screen, rather than drag the squares around, just click this icon so they trade positions. The beginning becomes the end, and the end becomes the beginning. We start full screen. And then I'm going to grab this, and this is where I want it to end up. I want to end up with this shot right about there. The arrow indicates green. I'm starting from there and moving to here. There's no real magic to make this look as attractive as you want. Remember, the more you zoom in, the fatter your pixels get. To preview it, see this button right here? Click it, and it does a preview. Now, by default, the Ken Burns effect does an ease in, starts to accelerate, speeds up in the middle, and then slows down at the end. Depending upon your settings, this could cause a warble, like a drunken sailor's move in the movement as it's going from the starting to the ending position. If you control click or right mouse click inside the box, ease in, ease out, which is the default setting, it gives you the acceleration. Or you could just have it slow down to the ending position or slow up from the start. Ease out means the beginning and ease in means the end. And linear means a straight line. Here's the difference. This is ease in and ease out. Let's preview. You can see the acceleration, and that may be what you want, or, again, control click or right click and say linear, and you can see the difference. Once you're happy with it, click done, and now we can play our clip. And notice the effect starts at the very beginning of the clip and goes to the very end of the clip. Now the benefit to this is if I were to suddenly put a, a dissolve at the beginning or a dissolve at the end, the Ken Burns effect automatically expands to include the extra portion of the clip that's inside the dissolve. It makes adding transitions really easy because I don't have to change any keyframes and I don't have to change the effect. It applies to the entire duration of the clip, whatever that happens to be. Change the duration of the clip, it automatically compensates for the differences in the duration. It's fast, it's easy, it works great, but it runs for the entire clip. I like the control that keyframes provide. Now the way to set a keyframe is, let's say I want to have my zoom start here. I'm going to change both the horizontal, I'm going to change the position and the scale. So I'm going to select my clip, go up to the inspector, go all the way to the right of scale. And when I click here, when this is an open diamond, there's no keyframe at that position of the playhead. When this is a solid diamond, there is. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to create a position keyframe. And then I'm going to go to right about here, any arbitrary point. I want to zoom in. Let's zoom to 100%, and I'm going to move myself down and move myself over. I'm just click, hold, and dragging on the numbers with the mouse right about there. So what I've done is it starts full screen and then picks up and zooms in. Now you'll notice it looks like it's a drunken sailor doing the zoom. Now that's caused by 
that by default, Apple does an ease in, ease out transition. Let's click this left pointing arrow to move to the earlier keyframe. Let's show the keyframe controls, which is clicking this box. And let's right mouse click right here. I'm clicking on the starting keyframe and changing it from smooth to linear. Right mouse click or control click on the ending keyframe, changing that from smooth to linear. And now when I play it, it moves in a straightforward manner from the starting position to the ending position with no drunken sailor effect. In order for that to work, you show the path by clicking this icon next to the word transform. Then you right mouse click on your starting and ending keyframes and change them from smooth to linear. And if you want, if you really want to get carried away, double click anywhere on the path to set a new keyframe and you can make the keyframe a curved path and you can adjust the shape of the curve, but whoops, not by grabbing the bezier handles and dragging out to change the shape of the curve. Now that rotation should not be, let's just set that back to zero. And we'll play this. And we've got some rotation keyframes in there. We'll just click the go back button, let go, and it goes back. Now we're shifting out of dealing with stills into creating effects, but I wanted to illustrate the difference between the Ken Burns effect, which always goes the entire duration of the clip, and keyframes, which give us much more control over moving on an image, provided you have enough pixels to work with, and that's where spatial conform comes in. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with stills in Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 222. Membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,600 movies, hundreds of hours, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.